السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال الذين كفروا لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن والغو فيه لعلكم تغلبون وقال الله تبارك وتعالى طاها ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى in these two verses, Allah Tawarukta has explained how we should look at Quran, how we should appreciate Quran, what is the need for us to read Quran, why so much effort is made in the world to somehow pull us away from Quran. In the first verse, Allah Tawarukta speaks about this waqal al kafaru. The word kufar, we all know it very well. We speak about a kufar world around us, a world of evil, a world of filth. Many a time a parent who's worried about her child will say that normally it happens with a mother. A mother has a unique feeling for her child. He must become like the Imam Ghazali of the era. So that mother worries that my child must not look at cartoons on the phone. My child must not look at movies, television. But that child, whenever he goes to maybe the sister's house or to the mother-in-law's house, so they got the television there. And it's the nature of a child. When the child sees something, his eye will go like that. The child, mother is making so much of effort to keep him far from the world of darkness. But darkness is everywhere. So your holiday is coming, the mother is worried. She tells the child, if you're going to go there, aren't you going to do something? Aren't they going to make you watch? And then fights are taking place in the families. Some people are saying, you're overdoing it. Let the child watch now. Later on, he can become pious. All of that effort is being made so that a world of darkness can envelope everyone. Is it possible that a person can make sure darkness doesn't come in his own house? Because darkness is everywhere. It doesn't need to find a window open. It can go through the event. It doesn't need to find a door open. It can go under the door. The evil that we are finding ourselves in today, that man could be the mufti of the town, darkness is in his house. He could be the sheikh or the sheikh of the empire, darkness is in their pocket. That man can be sitting for a tikaf in the masjid, darkness is in his tent. They have brought it everywhere and anywhere. The old uncle who can't do anything, Hazrat Shah Hakim Muhammad Akhtar Sahib Rahimullah would say, he reached that age that now nothing of his body can move except his eyes. But he also will carry on looking. He says why he's going to look, what he's going to get out of it. But if that old uncle sees a pretty girl in front of him, he'll go like, that one ha, like, you say, uncle, like, your error is finished. Even if she came to you like nothing will happen, but he also will be. That old man was knocked, the young child was going to be knocked. But we never thought in the past, where you would tell that this boy is still small, someone will make a joke, he's still small, there's nobody small anymore. That child knows more than the parents ever dreamt about. A lot of us are worried that in the school now they're going to teach this filthy and dirty thing, and it is a filthy and a dirty thing. But it's more harder for the teacher than the child also. Because the teacher doesn't know how I'm going to explain this. The amazing thing is the child already knows it. That child already knows it. They understand all those words. When one boy, one friend, when I was in England one time, this very same thing came out. So there they called the parents. At least South Africa, one day if they'll have a phone. The phones will never be working. Telcom will always be off. There they phone, so they say tomorrow we're showing a child a cartoon. So with a cartoon, it will explain the whole thing in a friendly, nice, joking manner. Because the parents, they can't explain to the child like where the child is from. So we are going to be showing this child this thing, do you have any problem with it? So this, boss, un- this father was very upset. Because you understand what they will show you, how they will show you, although it's a cartoon. So while we were driving in that car, he's asking me like, and he's showing me that there's no way we can completely say no. There are certain limits that they'll give us to say, I don't accept it. So I asked him, up till now, have you told your child 
how he's born. So the father was like, how you tell your child? He's supposed to learn. So that's when I told him, you know, when I was small, for years I believed like, first there was a time my mother used to say one stalk, one bird was flying and that bird that dropped that thing. I was the man who we never have internet and WhatsApp to check up is it true or false. And then many years after that, I really believed it was my mother went to the hospital, she saw me, she liked me, she bought me. It was such a, like, a nice story. The day I first heard about it, I told the person who told me, no way. Like, no way. Today there's no no way. The child knows about it already. But has a father ever told his child how it happened? So I said to him, you must be able to tell your child how it happened before somebody else tells Because whoever will teach the child what's happening as you go up, the child will trust that man's every word. If a father can tell his child what's happening, he'll show the real picture. And I told him, I'll give you an example how to tell your child this. It's off the topic, but maybe every father can go home today and try it. I said, start telling your child that what was the beginning of man. It was not that there was a monkey and that monkey slept with the monkey's wife. There was no one and Allah Tabarakullah created a form which was called the most unique form in the world, huge in size. Forty zira, meaning the Statue of Liberty if you look at today. Forty zira going into the sky, about 22, 23 meters perhaps. High in the sky was a beautiful picture, the most handsome figure ever made. Allah Tabarakullah created that, the words that will come with my own hands. With my own hands, when it's mentioned, means absolutely no flaw in Nabi Adam alayhi salam. When the devil saw it, he only saw dirt and filth because his eye was dirty and filthy. He looked in Nabi Adam alayhi salam looking for one flaw. There was no flaw. This was made by Almighty Allah unique. Nabi Adam alayhi salam was created. Ru was blown. He was made to wake up. He needed a companion. Allah tabarakallah created the most beautiful, the most beautiful that can ever be imagined. That's our granny. Hawa radiallahu anha is next to Adam alayhi salam, his eye opens, he becomes so happy. Had there been anything dirty in the seer, a Nabi of Allah would not have ever asked for a companion. To explain to your child how Allah made the system. But when the devil looked at man, he understood that where this man has been blessed with something which is the cause of prosperity, which is a cause of happiness, which is a cause of goodness, which is a cause of offspring going in the world. The devil looked at that same thing which is called an inner desire. A desire for Adam alayhi salam for a companion. The desire for Hawa radiallahu anha to be with someone. That desire which was pure and clean, the devil saw that that is the one place that I can hit that man. It is called the desire. If I can make this man put that desire in the wrong place, I said then explain to your son, don't be shy about it. Because Almighty Allah made this body and everything in the body was made. So Almighty Allah made the tongue and the tongue was said that you are going to go through this world to see what you will say. You can either make someone happy and get your paradise, you can make someone cry and you can get your hell. From that small age the child must be told you can be a bully in school, but one day when you go in the grave somebody else is going to be bullying you. Or in that school you can worry about somebody else, not make them cry. A group of boys get together, they want to mock, but you will not mock, because my Allah created the stung to see how I will steer the stung. Then Allah created that eye, that eye was given that you can look at what's halal for you, you can look at what's haram for you. Had that eye not had the ability to see dirt and fill, there would be no exam. Your child from the age of four or five will understand this world will show you so much of haram. But Allah gave you the eye to see, will my servant look at the haram or will he pull back from haram? Allah then gave the tongue, so that the tongue can be told, you can eat a lot of things in the world, it's your tongue. Or you can eat those things that your Allah wants you to eat. From the beginning, the tongue was put in Adam. Everything was told, man, it is yours, you are the owner, you are the controller. No, there is one controller above you. Will you eat it how you want to or will you eat it how he wants to? Will you look what you want to see? Will you look what he wants to see? Then Allah created a desire. This desire was so unique. It was going to make you move in the world for good things. It was going to make you move towards haram things. It was going to make you interested and say, Daddy, one day I want to get married. 
It was going to make you hungry because of which you would come to mommy and say, Mommy, I'm sorry I troubled you. Please give me supper. There was going to be a desire because of which you would wake up in the morning and run to the toilet. And that very desire Allah put in you, which was going to be a desire for what is not halal for you also. There was going to be so many girls around you in school. There was going to be a desire, can't she be mine, can't she be mine, if that child at the age of five can be told that Allah also gave you a desire. So when he goes to school, and in our schools we know, the teacher always says, it's very hard to separate the children. Sometimes it's not hard to separate the children. Allah save us all. Sometimes the teacher doesn't want to separate the children. There were those madaris that we visited. The girl of the madrasa who's in Parda becoming an alima writes a letter crying that we are begging that they separate the girls because the ustad sees the boys, he sees the girls. Boys and girls said boy on that side, girls on that side. The Ustad does not want to separate them because he enjoys looking at them. So suddenly one girl became his diamond. She became his cake. She became whatever sweet could be in the market. She became that. That girl never understood. How come today she's barfi, tomorrow she's jalebi. She was so thrilled like my Ustad likes me so much. I'm getting the high levels of wilayat. Until that old Ustad then sent a proposal for the young girl. Then she understood I'm really his jalebi. Then she pulled back. She thought like his grandfather. Grandfather got no desire. It don't work like that. Everyone got desire. The sheikh of the alam got desire. If the child at the age of five is told, you got desire. When you will go to school now and friends will start joking, AC Aisha, AC Zulekha, AC Rabia. And in our schools we got all the others also. Everything to see and everything to see. The child at the age of six will look down. And if people around him laugh, for him it won't be a laughing matter. He will say, my Allah put desire in me to see whether I'll do it how he wants or I'll do it how I want. You want your child to be the wali of the era, you make him from young. And then I said, coming down to the body, explain to your child, Allah put this private part. The thing was so unique, it was going to take out the filth from your body, urine. And in that very thing which was going to take out the filth of your body, Allah put such a substance in it which was going to make you also. From the most dirtiest place which took out the most dirtiest, from that place Allah was going to make the most unique. And nothing to be shy to your son about because Allah made it like this. So then Allah creates a desire and explain to your child that you know this private part is such a filthy thing. And the private part of the woman is such a filthy thing. This private part, when it touches that private part, it makes the entire body napak. That I have to take a ghusl. A person came in front of Shah Hakim Muhammad Akhtar Sahib Rahimullah and he said, Hazrat, I'm going to get married soon. But it's still not on. But the thoughts of that girl is coming to me. So a deep sentence he said, think about the sentence. Hazrat Hakim Sahib said that the day you get married, whatever you have to do with your wife, you'll do it. He said, no matter how much you enjoy it, you'll enjoy it. But I'll tell you one thing, when it is finished, you will feel dirty, she will feel dirty. Both of y'all will go looking for a shower. Then he said, why did Allah make it and why does the whole body become napak when you go to your wife? He says, because at that moment when a man goes to his wife and is in that most closest condition, he says, that is the moment that the entire body from head to toe becomes negligent of Almighty Allah. He said, the result of it, the whole body falls napak. He said, if the action was halal, when you are taking that ghusl, at least you will know what I did was clean. He says, but I tell you, if the action is haram, when you are washing yourself in that shower, you will start crying. And you will say, what did I do? This body was made that the most filthiest organ was now going to give a desire to go to the most filthiest organ. Allah made it. And Allah made it that if that thing has to happen, a child can be born from it. So you need the world can come out, the kudrat of Allah. In the most filthy of places, He could take out the most unique of things. And in that place, Almighty Allah placed the biggest exam for man. And say to your child, Oh my child, it is this thing that has put many people in the world in Jahannam. Allah has put you in this world with 60 years. If you can control your body. You use your eye where it has to go, your tongue where it has to go, your body where it has to go, and you are the friend of Allah. No matter what your desire is, 
I said, now let your child go to school. Now when friends speak to him about masturbation, he will say to him that this is not mine, it is my Allah's. I was just put in charge of the car, but it doesn't belong to me. I was told I will test to see how you drive this car. The child will not masturbate now because he will know it's not mine. The child will not masturbate when he got a desire. He'll understand desire is natural. I'll have to fight my desire to make my Allah happy. If the child at the age of six years can learn this, may Allah make it such our children can learn it. They are born awliya before they even become baligh. So what the school wants to teach, they will teach that have we taught our children anything but. So where that went, I don't know why that came in my mind, but inshallah Allah make it beneficial. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا The kuffar said to create this environment of dirt, they needed one thing. They will get the phone and all the filth of the phone to me and you. That Ustad in the madrasa can make in our madrasa, we got a law. We catch a student with a phone, it will be confiscated, you will never get it back. Every day you'll get a phone. That boy before the one phone is taken, he got another phone. There are some students who keep three phones with them. One phone is meant as the broken phone. That has to go to the madrasa. When they catch you, they say, here's my phone. And they'll cry. Say, please don't take it, don't take it. You try to put it on, it's not going on. That's the one phone. No matter how much effort you make, that second phone is a good phone. But the third phone is the even better phone. Because he knows if you pick up and you put this one on and it's not going on, you'll tell him, you're lying to me, bring the right phone. Still he'll take out the other phone, he'll say, hey, you caught me, here's the phone, he still got another one in his cupboard. The real one will never come to you. How much they can get it, can you stop it? Allah Tawarukhtala said, the kuffar will say, there is one thing that wipes away the dirt. You can't stop the dirt. You can't stop the darkness. But if you have lights in the masjid, you just put on lights and darkness goes. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ They said, do not listen to this Qur'an. وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ Create such play and amusement in it that no one must listen to it. Then only will you be at top of the Muslims. Then only when you be ghalib. Then only will your poison manage to go in the entire body. Then only will you be able to make those young children into monsters who will go out with guns and ready to kill anyone. The purpose of this hivs, time is almost up, I will just mention to you one or two incidents. The purpose of this hivs, however, when we hear a boy finishing Quran in one jalsa, he said this, what is the purpose of hivs the Quran? It is tasheelul qira'a. Tasheelul qira'a means to make reading easy for me now. I memorize the whole thing by heart. Memory is always weak, I'll forget very fast. In today's time, because of that phone, our memory is even weaker. We can't remember much. So the boy who finished Quran today, after a few years, you might not find your Quran so strong. You become sad and you just put the Quran one side. You say, I don't know what's going to happen, Ramadan. Memorizing Quran was not meant only to read by heart. Memorizing Quran was to make it easy for you to read inside. You will be able to read inside so fast. The Seelul Qirat was the maqsad of hifz Quran. After you memorize Qur'an, don't ever stop reading Qur'an. You don't have to read it by heart, just carry on reading. You are a hafiz of Qur'an, so for you to read three juz is not hard. And for the one who never memorized Qur'an, or for the one who memorized and he forgot his Qur'an, this is what tahqiq that has been said, researched. A man who forgot his Qur'an, but continues reading his Qur'an, Allah will not take him to task on the day of Qiyamah. Because memory loss is a natural thing that comes on the body. We saw great awliya at the end of their life. They asked us, what's that verse again? Now I have become old, I have forgotten my Quran. Memorizing is a great thing. Forgetting is a natural thing. But that man who after memorizing Quran does not read Quran. On the day of Qiyamah, he will not be able to say to Allah, why I never read. It was on his tongue, tasheelul qiraat. Who can't do that? May Allah make it, all of us start reading Qur'an. And lot of Qur'an. The half is one para, two paras. The more the poison is given, the more Qur'an has to be read. The more the poison comes in, the more poison has to be pushed out. The more Qur'an we will read, the more lights will come about in our house. Shayateen and Jinnat had an open world at one time. Qur'an was revealed, they had to scatter in every direction. In today's time, everyone is complaining, my house got Jinnat. I got a jinn, my mother got a jinn, the army is becoming richer and richer, 
He say nowadays in the past a Morana and Alim, he was never ever a rich person. Unless he was selling cars. But otherwise normally wherever he'll become rich. But if that Alim could change his name to Amil, that he could say I'll give a Taweez, suddenly he'll have the rich people at his door also. He can charge whatever he wants to charge. What was the need for so much Amil, so much Ruqya, so much of everything? Perhaps in a place where no one knew how to read Quran, it would have been necessary. In a place where everyone can read Quran, where one surah, surah Kahf, was said that the greatest fitna of the world, which is called the fitna of the Jal, you read the surah or ten ayat of the surah on the day of Friday, and that entire fitna will not hit you. If ten ayat could do such, what the whole Quran will do? But that whole Quran can't chase away that one jinnat in my house. Perhaps there's a thing that no one is reading or whoever is reading is not intending. You will read Quran, may Allah make us all readers of Quran. On the first page of our Quran, make some intentions. Right there for the protection of me and my family, full protection. Quran is like Zamzam. It will do for you what you want for it. You wanted to memorize Quran, the heart became easy. You want protection from Quran, make that intention, it will give you everything. You want shifa from Quran, you write it there, cure for this year, Quran will give you. You want paradise from Quran, you want hidayat from Quran, what intention you will write, then start reading, and enjoy reading, and enjoy reading. Live in Quran, die in Quran, you will see darkness will move away, light will come. May Allah tabarakallah make us all readers of Quran. It will help us in this world. Wallah, it will help me and you in the grave. It will help those that have already gone. As I was coming, I phoned my brother Muhammad Imran. Normally he has unique waqiyat and stories. So I told him, give me one story, one incident that I can tell to the people. So I will mention this incident. It really affected me. May it affect all of us. Look at this yaqeen of this year, what this Quran does. How it helps the people. So one half, one ustad of the his class, he said this. He said that one boy in his class came for a while. He never used to dress very nicely. He could see his parents are not really interested in him. And because they're not really interested, where they're going to teach him how to read. So that boy's wording also was not good. He stuck ring, fell shouting in little bit, go learn properly at home and come. But he couldn't get it. And for a few days or for a few months, he was there going slowly, stuttering, stuttering, memorizing few surahs, few juz. Maybe he did one to paras. But he wasn't the star of the class. And then that boy stopped coming for a while. That was close to the jalsa. That ustad also wasn't even too bothered to go and find out about that boy. He would see the boy's mother coming, dropping him off. Then for a while the boy's mother stopped coming, then the boy stopped coming. But because he wasn't a star of the class, he wasn't the best reader, you're not going to go and say, hey, please bring him back, he's not anything star. Then just before the jalsa, this boy phones. And he says, I heard we're having the jalsa on this day. I'm also part of the class. The ustad thought he's gone and he was happy he's gone. So he said, uh, like... Uh, yeah, but this is like the, the... Now he doesn't know what to say. He's part of the class. And it's not only those who finish the Quran. It's those who are in the class. Everyone will be reading. And he was a Qari. Like, so he had top, top students. And this one is not top at all. So he's telling the boy, Yeah, but you weren't here for a while. So the boy said, Yeah, I know that. I'm so sorry and all that. But I'm coming for the Jalsa. I promise you I'll be there. So can I read? I have to be reading. I have to be reading. So he told the boy, uh, Finally, to make the boy happy, he said, Okay, but just read one, like one something small. And just make sure you learn. So the boy said, no, I'm going to read Surah Ar-Rahman. So there the Ustad collapsed. Like now he's sitting and thinking that all that, the world will look at what is this year. So then he thought about it. Okay, I'll put that boy at the ending. Like So when top, top readers are coming, good, good readers. And when he comes at the ending, like you can always tell the people that he just came recently. That was like those that you can see what will happen. One day he'll read whatever story. He put that boy at the ending. And that boy, when his turn came, so that Ustad said, I had never heard Quran like this. Never heard Quran. I was shocked like that. So everyone was like, wow, like you put the best for the last. So afterwards everything finished, he goes to the student, he says, you never learned to read like that from me. He said, no, I learned from the computer. So he said, like, why are you not coming to class then? So he said, no, actually, why I stopped coming is my mother. She got very sick. She was always sick. But she wanted me to come half years of Quran, that's why I came. He said, but when she got very sick now, on the computer I started learning. He said that why I wanted to read today, he said, my mother is deaf. So she had a desire for me to read Quran, 
But even if I knew how to read, she wouldn't hear me. He says, but today is the first time I'm convinced my mother heard me. Because she died two nights ago. Conviction that that voice goes in the grave also. That small boy had that conviction. I definitely got a father or mother who passed away. Or an auntie or uncle. Or a grandfather or grandmother. You also got someone. We got someone who we loved and we'll always have someone who we love. The Quran will help us here. The Quran will help us there. The Quran is going to help us there. The Quran is going to go everywhere with us. We only have to do one thing. While we got the small 20, 30 years, wherever we go, take the Quran with us also. Put the Quran in your pockets. But not the best, but if you have to, put it on your phone. But not just to show the people, hey, look what I got on my phone, but to read the Quran. Walghawfihi, they said, make so much of play that they stop reading. Almighty Allah said, Ma anzalna alayka al Quran. I never revealed this Quran to make life hard for you. I made it easy for you. Tazkiratan limay yaksha. You just read this thing and it will make everything for you opening up. Everything will happen. On your first page, write some intentions and read this Quran. It will save you, it will save your children, it will save your spouses. It will save your progenies. It will save your houses around. It will make miracles here, there, everywhere. May Allah Tawarukana make us all Sahibul Quran, people of the Quran. We live with the Quran. We die reading Quran. We stand up on the day of Qiyamah reading Quran. This Quran takes us right through till Jannatul Firdos. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah.